Hey, it's Jabbo. Welcome to Brigzar. And I don't care how hard it hurts this channel. I have made a pledge to myself and to you, even though you're not asking, uh, not to be shocked in my thumbnails. So it's it's obviously something that works for thumbnails, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> I may end up being shocked in one of my thumbnails in the future, though. So it's just a, a goal, not a rule. I got a package... Uh, in the mail, which I think is a surprise because it's addressed to Briggs R. It's from Mark. So I'm going to open this up. But the main focus of this video today is to do Briggs R. Answer Thingy. And I think I want to do maybe at least one video a week. We'll see how it goes. Uh, answering questions. Uh, the pattern for the year pretty much has been I might feature a comment, whether it's a question or not, uh, in each video, but I've been getting a lot of these Bricks Art Answer Thingy questions. So we're going to look at them. I haven't screened these in advance. There may be some that deserve their own video. Uh, there may be some that I can't answer or don't know the answer to. That's, that's not shocking. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go through. I got my computer here and I'm tired. My legs are hurting. I think it's because I'm old and I've been on my feet all day. Uh, so I'm going to sit down for a change in a video. But let's go look and see what we got here first. And then we'll do the questions. Oh, and this is a classic. They might be giants. <laughs> T-shirt. Oh, and it tells me. I, I needed this one the other day. So since 1983. Actually, it says hold on, extra crispy. Since 1983, they might be giants. Uh, this is the man there. Looks like the Monopoly guy almost. Let's do this. We got Lamar. And we'll try not to cut what's in the box. Try not to show the addresses. We got a note here. Let's see what it says. It says, hey, Jabbo. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about a brand new Hot Wheels car. It's the 2021 new model custom small block. Hmm. You can remove the engine and canopy to add your own parts. I do not have an inventory of Lego parts, so I thought it would be nice to see if you and maybe they might be Bricks or Sarah know some of the possibilities. Oh my goodness, you got to be kidding! This is from Race Grooves. <gasps> oh, not affiliated with Mattel. <laughs> Y'all don't know who Race Grooves is, man. He does a lot of the Hot Wheels stuff. Look at that. New for 2020. I have not even seen... You know, I, do, I usually do look for oddball uh, Hot Wheels cars. I mean, there's actually a few on the shelf. <laughs> and I think some of them might be... Um, what's the other one? Matchbox. But I have not seen these. Custom Small Block. Custom Small Block. So he sent me... Um, Two of these, 10 or 10. So best for track. Oh, look, it's got connectors in the back and in the front. And what did he say? Oh, this makes my day. Um, you can remove the engine and canopy to add your own parts. So these, since these are two, yeah, 131 or 250, 250, these are two of the same things. Let me open this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> so you can do your own thing with these. Hold on a minute. <laughs> so Mardi Gras Man and I, don't, we don't need uh, steering wheels or anything. <laughs> so the small block car, custom small block car is uh, three studs used. So it makes it where you're... You'd have to use jumpers if you wanted something centered in there or one by ones uh, like that. Something stu two studs wide like uh, minifigures over to the side. But that is really neat. I had not seen these. I had not been looking for I didn't know I needed to be looking for these either. So thank you, uh, Race Grooves. That was a big surprise. And I guess you could put like um, some tiles there. You could put, oh you could put like one by ones here. You could put a one by one red a trans red there and there, and then a red tile there. You could put I don't know how this is going to connect. That is a little different connection there. I 
don't know how that one works. So I had to figure that out. It'd be nice if you could put some headlights on there. I wonder if that's designed to be kind of a sideways connection. So, yeah, I'm going to have to... I'll see. BBI. It is very durable. We just found that out. That's the way it goes. All right. Oh, it's got studs here as well. I didn't even. I could have. I could have left the minifigures. There we go. <laughs> oh, you know we've been overdue. We actually got to do something with the um, the Hot Wheels track. I think the Hot Wheels track has been put up for about five plus years, maybe longer. <laughs> But yeah, if you want to see a channel that does awesome stuff with uh, Hot Wheels, just race grooves, marble grooves. Thank you, Mark. And uh, I'll yeah, I'll get the the real brains behind this operation. They might be bricks to see if he can come up with something for this. But this is definitely uh, something I had not known about. He also included some official race groove stickers. Nice. Like, if you cover that up, it's grew, race grew. Anyway, somebody will know that reference. But, um, yeah, awesome YouTuber right there. So thanks again, Race Grooves, for um, the awesome uh, Lego-compatible Hot Wheels car. I never yet yeah, hadn't seen it. But I, I guess I should really rethink um, being shocked in a thumbnail because I, I genuinely was shocked. <laughs> So thank you. So I, I, I did promise to do some Bricks Art Answer Thinky questions. So we're going to do those. And I will definitely get with, uh, like I said, they might be bricks. And see if we can do something with this. And um, customize it and such. Uh, so let's get to the questions. Again, thank you, Race Grooves. And got a lot of them. May not put them on the screen. Uh, so we'll just go through them. And I hope to do this more regularly. But uh, the first one is from Axel HDH572 Fibonicci. I can't say his YouTube name. It's really hard to say. <laughs> it's like Mixelplixic type thing. No, not many vowels in there. Anyway, he says, hashtag bat. And that's where I'm searching. I just search my comments. Hashtag BAT. Brings our answer thingy. He says, how do you get so many different... Oh, wait a minute. How do you get so many different shirts from... So where do I get all these shirts? How do I get them? Well, first of all, number one, I'm old. Number two, I don't throw stuff away when I probably should. <laughs> so that's the two main reasons. Uh, I also would get free shirts whenever I could. Uh, whether, you know, like you, you, you do something like when I went on the brag, you got the free shirts with that. You went to a different town, they gave you a free shirt. So if, if I could get a free shirt, I got a free shirt. Uh, got some at Six Flags and places like that. And then if it's just a really neat shirt, you know, I, I get them. So I have subscription boxes I've got them from, whether it be Brick Builders Club, Vsauce. Uh, I've got them from, obviously, from They Might Be Giants. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, and, I, and I, I got shirts that should have been thrown away. Uh, regrettably, though, so I do. Uh, I guess it shouldn't really be a regret. I had Grew the Wanderer, which is actually what I was referencing. I guess I shouldn't have gave it away. Uh, Grew the Wanderer t-shirts. I had a whole bunch of those. Uh, he was my favorite comic book character. And I sold all the comic books, except for I kept one each of each issue. And I had, a, you know, I had duplicates, and I sold the whole lot of them to this guy, and he wanted some T-shirts, and I had the T-shirts, so I included T-shirts <laughs> with his purchase. So yeah, that's what, all my Groot T-shirt. I, I have a picture somewhere. Maybe I can find it one day. That's in Six Flags Annual of me playing softball, wearing a Groo shirt. So it's got Gru with his sword and me with my baseball bat. Um, I. <laughs> And this is one from Mayo Hosco. It says, when are you going to get back to the moon? Oh my goodness, he commented on one. We actually used the green screen. So we bought a green screen. When was this video? <laughs> we had this green screen. Oh my goodness, this is an old video. I don't even know when I uploaded it. it looks, They might be bricks look a little in, in this video. Let's see what it, date it published. 2015. So we've had the, the green screen for at least six years, and I've seldom used it. So <laughs> it's in the it's. I think you know what? I think this video that you commented on 
it, it was called how many Lego pieces and sets do you have in your collection? Bricks are answer thing. So it was actually was a bricks are answer thing. And a lot of our early videos was they might be bricks and I just sitting down in front of a webcam answering your questions. And I think I was a little disappointed because that video flopped. <laughs> And I thought I went through all the trouble to use a green screen and you know the cat walk by and all that Chrissy's in that one So yeah, I, I need to do that again uh, Mayo also asked what happened to the Saturday Night Live stream in the US uh, Spirit Particle, Haley Bricks and such They still do live streams. I see uh, especially Haley Bricks uh, gets on with um, Hoosier Bricks. Hoosier Bricks does live streams pretty regularly and they are on there a lot with them But the whole Saturday thing I think Saturday there's probably still people that do it, but a lot of us just don't have time. There, it seems like there's more stuff that happens on Sunday now between Holland and Ballin, Bricksmith, Pink Bucket Nation, you know. It's just, uh, you got a new group of people. Uh, and there are people that regularly stream uh, from Cy O'Connor <laughs> and all the, the ones that are in that crowd. It, it's interesting seeing the dynamic of people when they, when you come in, and there are a lot of people that come into YouTube at the same time as you do or in your country or you just, for whatever reason, connect with them. You have that close-knit circle of people. When we got ours, you know, and it's hard to, you get to a certain point, it's hard to get really, really close to other people, even though you may like them. So, you know, I, I got the ones that I still connect with, like Mardi Gras Men and uh, Brick Trains. Uh, there's some of the OG ones out there, like Bricks for Chris and Hoosier Bricks. They've been on this platform a really long time, but then you got all these new and up and up and coming ones. And a lot of us old school ones, we're still doing it with just like the basic webcam stuff. You got the people today with the DSLR and the fancy background. <laughs> That's not me. Mayo Hosko also asked, uh, "Will you ever recreate the messy backdrop <laughs> of the anniversary of your channel?" Yeah, probably. It is messy down here, so that's not hard to do. Uh, let's get to some other questions. So that was a, a few of um, Mayo's questions. He's got a whole bunch more. I could do a complete episode with that. Uh, hashtag Bat from Andrew S. He asked, was the Bat Pod a promo? So the Bat Pod, like you can't see it. It's over here. I got the Tumblr and some Batmobiles down there. That, and we ended up piecing together uh, the Bat Pod. It was... A giveaway actually it was you couldn't in it was it was hard to get you couldn't just get it <laughs> it was some type of giveaway so it was very very hard to get and then out of the blue they put it on VIP like Lego VIP for like 11,000 points and some people happened to notice it. They didn't advertise it. They just put it on there. I guess they had a few extra. I don't know how many, but some people were able to get it for free that way. I, yeah, they, they're sneaky. So they did occasionally sneak things on to Lego VIP uh, without advertising it. And you had to be fortunate enough to happen to be looking in order to get it. Um, that was one of them, the, the bat pod, but, uh, it was a, it wasn't a promo, it wasn't a gift with purchase, it was like a giveaway type thing, and I don't remember the circumstances behind that. Here's one from Barry Francis, longtime viewer, and he's one of the two Barrys <laughs> in the UK that sends us stuff like the magazines. He says, um, uh, what is the color you have the most shirts, and second, what is your favorite color for a t-shirt? Because your favorite color of a t-shirt might not be the one you have the most of. So I think what I'm wearing, white, seems to be the standard. Because a lot of my Lego shirts, a lot of my They Might Be Giant shirts are white. That's that's the common color uh, for a t-shirt. But I kind of, as far as my favorite color, it's usually the darker ones. I like either black or navy or dark gray. Uh, are some of my favorite colors and I'm thinking of, and like I, I here's a spoiler alert not a spoiler alert but uh, truth I was wearing I come down here to film these videos and I changed my shirt to the I got a t-shirt pile uh, the shirt I was wearing was black and it's one that I don't want to wear on video yet because I really like the shirt <laughs> and I do put the shirts in a box and I don't wear them again even personally <laughs> But I will after the year is over. So yeah, it was a black, a black pylon shirt actually. 
Uh, Mayo asks, will you have Shark Week in 2021? Did I already miss it? I don't even know when Shark Week is. I still want to get that Duplo-based plush shark that I don't know if anybody ever sells that or I don't know where you would find it. Uh, here's one from Brian's Brick Barn. He says, you mentioned that the swirls might be related to brittle Lego. Have you looked at the those brittle blue plates you have in the boneyard for swirling under a blacklight? I need to do a whole blacklight video or series. That's a really good one. In fact, I still haven't done the thing with the fire brigade looking at those under a uh, blacklight. I, I think... The ones that showed up more under a black light, though, were like reds and oranges, uh, where you can see a definite distinction of at least two different variations, sometimes three or four, I think. Uh, and they, some of them are significant. I mean, it's like you look, oh, these are all the same color. You put them under a black light, and you're like, whoa, those are two different colors. It's like it's great for doing hidden messages. I don't think the blues do though, because I, I think they're just kind of dark under a, a black light. Even the brittle ones compared to ones that aren't brittle. But it's a, something that I guess I should really try to do. Uh, Andy Kills You says, how's the BrickLink store been doing? It's so I closed it. <laughs> At the time of filming, it may be open by the time you will actually see this video. But it got so busy, I closed it. Uh, people are, in the U.S. are spending their stimulus money, apparently. Uh, Nuka Boy 2003 says, how many tipper trucks... Do you have built in your collection? How many do you think you might be able to build from parts in your shop? Oh, wait a minute. I answered this one before. <laughs> As I get a message. <laughs> I got a spam text on my work phone. What is up with that? So uh, I got to, I officially, I guess I can answer this question again, even though I already answered it in another video. I just built, as I sound like Mr. Haney, <clears throat> I built uh, the 200th one today. So I built 11 or 12 or 13 more. So I actually got 200 fully built. Not not counting the ones sealed in the box. I got 200 uh, built tipper trucks. Uh, Goodall10 asks, any experience, any experience repairing old instructions? I have valuable instruction books that are pretty have a pretty significant tear. I could use scotch tape. Don't use scotch tape. Uh, it, are there better options? Uh, yes, I'm going to actually respond. Yes, there are options. Look up comic book restoration videos, I think. I have not done it, though. <laughs> Don't use scotch tape. I think they make um, archival safe, like tape. Um, and there are, and speaking of like race crews, you know, he deals with the, the cars and other toys. And it's like sometimes people in the toy collecting, they like the boxes. And a lot of toy things, the boxes get thrown away. And there are people, though, that have, they find a beat up box and they kind of restore it. But they use a special type of tape. And I don't know what it is. I haven't used it. I watched a, a guy fix up a $6 million man action figure box once. And he, he made it look a lot better than it was when he got it. Stop doing this. Um, all right. <laughs> Brick Trains asked, the uh, instruction manuals for 10192, did they come in the box? I need to check that one out. That is the one that was designed by Fazoom. I know the ones designed by Mark, uh, the Space Skulls, it had it inside the box. But the one designed by Fazoom, I don't know. If it didn't, I don't have them. I think it does come in the box. I won't say it does. Uh, but some of it is a Lego factory set, for those who don't know, and fan design. Those were fan design sets. Um, some of the... Uh, the ones that design 101, 10191 and 10192 can be seen on Fazoom's channel every week on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, they designed those sets, and uh, there were other people that collaborated on some of the other ones. I got, I used to have one up here, Statue of Liberty. I think I took it apart or took it down. It's not. Yeah, Statue of Liberty still up, but you can't see it. But uh, 
as that was de designed by Nathan Sawaya, I think. But some of those sets did not, the one with the Statue of Liberty, it did not, they never made a printed instruction. The train factory set, that was, it had like 20 different designs in there and it had uh, the main design was on a printed instruction. That one came outside of the box. When you ordered it from Shop at Home, they sent you the box and they sent you uh, the separate instruction with the box. So that's a very odd thing to do. I think they were trying to, even back then, trying to get to digital only instructions. I don't like digital only. All right, let's, we'll do a few more and then we'll save, we'll do uh, an, another video because uh, I talk a lot and I, I can keep talking here. Oh, here's one from Wes, Wes Tripp. He says, when you ask yourself a question, do you still search for bat? Hashtag bat. Um, <laughs> I ask myself questions. I ask myself questions all the time. I have searched my own videos for things before that I couldn't remember. <laughs> Here's a, uh, let's get one from somebody I, ha I don't think I've answered a question uh, for. This is from Candy Crusher. It, it says, great video, so informative. Oh my goodness, this was an old one. This was part out versus sealed Lego sets. <laughs> it's an old video. He says, thank you. I, I don't sell much, uh, oh, excuse me, I don't sell now, but when I may when I retire in a few years. Has anything changed over the last few years or do the lessons in this video still hold true? Has any set really surprised you since this video was filmed? Wow, that is a great question. And I don't usually say that, but that, I should do a follow-up. So that one, I'm gonna save that one. I need to, I need to, I need to do, take a picture of it. But I, I take a picture on my phone. It does better. I'm doing snipe on this. So this was from Part Out versus Sealed Lego Sets. Uh, the Bricks Air Answer Thingy question I did back in the day. I'm going to see when this one was. So I was demonstrate. I have repeatedly said on this channel that uh, should never fear opening a set uh, because often the part out value is worth more than the sealed value. And that's especially true anytime a set is new other than poly bags or promos like this Ulysses Space Probe, it's probably worth more sealed than opened. Oh, I actually did a chart in this video. This was from 2015. I remember doing this. My hair was darker then. So, <laughs> 26,000 views. That's not bad. I did, a, I did the whiteboard. Oh, and it's got the uh, Jags Martin uh, logo on there. That's a good question. So, I see what I did here. Uh, I, I think I made, oh yeah, I did different sets. I'd show what the part out value was and then what the sealed value was. And of course the small sets were the same. Some sets are was, is worth more sealed. A small set was worth more sealed than parted out. But some of the bigger sets, you know what I should do? I should do the exact same sets that were in this video and see how they compare to today. Uh, some of them are probably worth a whole lot more sealed than they were then. But, uh, yeah, this would be a great great idea to do for a video. Even get the uh, chart out again. <laughs> but uh, over time, some of, as a set becomes more scarce, the sealed value uh, then will again probably be more than the part out value. But if you're in the business of selling bricks... You don't want to wait. You want to hold on to a set 20 years and then hope it goes up. Because and I think it's probably what I said in the video. It's like the greatest value. And I, don't, I don't think I said this. This is something I learned from Clutch. But he said the greatest value, part out value a set usually has is when it's first released. So it may not make any sense. But especially if it's got a lot of new parts or new minifigures. Sometimes those are worth more at release. <laughs> Because people might be trying to get the new parts. And that was the case with like the mosaics, the, the artwork. They were worth more early on. In fact, some of them had part out values, ridiculous part out values. Because they actually had parts that at one time were rare. But because we have these artwork, 
they're no longer rare. So the part out value still came way, 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 way down. Uh, but I think in general, if you want to turn things around, it's the part out value is better. Uh, except for, again, exclusives, poly bags, and, and a few other random things. But I got some train sets that I never opened that I thought, you know, if I sold those, I would probably part them out still. <laughs> and those are pretty old. I mean, they're from probably before when this video was made. Uh, but generally, most people, do, after a few years, people don't usually part out sets. After, Especially like if they're 10 years old, they probably sell them sealed. It's a lot easier. Uh, but I like I like parting out stuff. It's easier for me to ship the stuff. So good question, and that's uh, just a few of the bricks are answer thinking questions. There are dozens more here that I need to look at. But I'm going to go, and uh, I want to thank again Mark from Race Grooves. Go check him out. I'll be sure to put a link in the description or something. But um, pretty neat. I learned something today. I hope you learned something. And I'll be back tomorrow in a different shirt.